It's also the one year anniversary of the COVID lockdown. Not something anybody wants to clap about, I'm sure, but it's really, you know, a reflective thing to think about the last year, right? Like a, a year ago, we were in 219 Mount Airy Road and Chuck Pierce, I mean, it actually would be tomorrow, but you know how it works, you know, one day off a year, but it was the Sunday of March 8th that year, last year, that he was speaking at our church. And prophetic words, you don't always fully understand them. I mean, I would say normally you don't understand them when you hear them right away, but you pray into them and you write them down and you transcribe them and all those things are easier to do now than ever. So, you know, get your phone out, record the word if you hear it, and then test the word. Be like the Bereans, go back and test the word and then pray into it. And this is one, just a part of what Chuck said. Again, you can see the video. We posted it yesterday on the Facebook page and the YouTube channel. But part of what he said was, I say this, this is the ending of a season, but I already have your new direction in place. Now, in one way, that referred to the fact that we were moving. So we knew that we were moving out of 219 Mount Airy, but it was still nice to hear it come through the prophetic word. Chuck hadn't been here. He hadn't seen it. And in fact, he said, I don't want to see it in the natural yet. I just want to see it in the spirit. You know, and that's what true prophets do. They don't want to be tainted by, by this realm. They want to hear from the heavenly realm, right? You will be moving. You will be moving with me. God is saying through Chuck, into that place that I have for you. I can't tell you how comforting that was, trying to move during COVID, right? Because, like, here's, here's the curveball. If there's no COVID, you still have to move. You still have to reconstruct this chapel. I could show you the video someday of what this looked like before we came in here. And, you know, it's, it turned into a beautiful place, don't you think? Like, it's really amazing. But, you know, that's... That you had to see by vision. There was no balcony. There was no lobby. There was no children's room back there or green room. So I have to thank Sandy Damata also. We get a lot of compliments about the colors and all. That was somebody in our church here named Sandy Damata. I think she's my here. Okay, here she is. She's uh, really blessed us mightily. And I have to also say Dave Torres because he and his father, I don't know if Tom Torres is here, but Tom was the general contractor for this job. And, you know, when you're trying to then do this move during COVID, it means people were told they can't show up for their work jobs. And if you know anything about construction, everything's on a time frame. And if one part gets delayed and the delivery gets delayed, that stops the other people from doing what they are. And everybody's schedule's all getting thrown off. But God, but God, we started doing our live stream from the upper room. We never missed, I don't think we missed, we might have missed one live stream service for some technical thing, but that's pretty good in a, in a year. And it kept on plowing along. And you all were just so faithful and kept giving and there's no debt on this building. We didn't just do this building. We also did uh, another building, the rec center that David was talking about where the children are. Um, so, like, to look back, it was the year of the Lord's favor for the church, even though a lot of stress and struggle was happening. And I would keep going back to this word. And, and the Lord was saying through Chuck, you will be moving with me, Peter. <laughs> God saying, you're not moving. I'm going there and you're coming with me. <laughs> And man, that helps. I have to tell you, that helps. And you'll be developing a model, back to what Chuck was saying. Not a model that you've seen or been aligned with, but a model of change that is needed. The model you build will be a model that is sent out and recreated throughout the entire region. I say get ready. I'm causing a center. This would be part of that. A center to be established. I lost my place. So that meetings can, I'm sorry, out of the center, a new plan of meetings will come and a new mobilization will come. A people will arise and say, beginning in March, the wind blew in 2020, his hand moved and we were established to advance into our future. Wow, do this with me. I'm moving forward. <laughs> we are advancing into our future. Yeah. So I feel very grateful for that alignment that we have with Chuck and so many other people that have been through here to speak, and they'll be coming back in here again to speak, including Mike Hutchings. Uh, the relationships that we built over the years are just priceless to me. And some of the people that we interviewed during that COVID time, during lockdown, like Mario Murillo and, and many others, are just really valuable relationships that we have that speak context into us, not just the local church in northern New Jersey, but part of a much bigger national and international community. Um, and, and what I would finish this part with is from Esther chapter 4. I know a lot of you know we just came through Purim on the Jewish calendar. And you also know a very famous verse in the Bible from the book of Esther is, for such a time as this. 
right? And you could say, well, you know, you could, well, you could always say it's for such a time as this. I'm going to make the case now that it's also a word for us, for this church, for our leadership team, the people we're connected with that. Yes, there are opposing forces, but yes, we are also, we have been equipped to handle those opposing forces and that we are here too for such a time as this. So the voice version, Esther 4.13 says, and now Mordecai had to speak to the servants of Esther. Mordecai was her uncle, but he couldn't speak to her directly. So they came to him and gave him a message from Esther, and he's saying, okay, when you go back, this is what I want you to tell her. And he loved her. You know that, right? Tell Esther, don't be fooled. Just because you are living inside the king's palace doesn't mean that you, out of all the Jews, will escape the carnage. Strong word. The carnage. Genocide is what was on the table. You must go before your king. <laughs> now that's got a little baggage in it too, right? Because before this she says, I haven't been called. And if he doesn't call you, you can't go in. And if you go in without him calling you and he doesn't extend the scepter, it's curtains, as they used to say, right? <laughs> curtains, <laughs> if you're from Brooklyn. <laughs> If you stay silent during this time, deliverance for the Jews will come from somewhere, but you, my child, and all your father's family will die. And who knows, perhaps you've been made queen for such a time as this. And who knows, king of kings, perhaps you've been placed here for such a time as this. We're not holding on in the bunker saying, Jesus, come back and get us. It's terrible down here. We're going to occupy until he comes. That's the determination. That's also a kingdom theology that, that we, can, we can go, you know, as long as you want, hours and hours, we can tell you how. It's been misread to think that once you're a Christian, the only goal is to die and go to heaven. No, we're supposed to occupy until he comes. The kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violence taken by force. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. As the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. Not into the closet to hide. <laughs> Getting a little belligerent up here, I think. <laughs> I need a vision. I, I need to have a purpose when I get up every morning. I have to feel like I'm contributing my time and my effort toward a redemptive goal. And, and I know we are, and I hope you can join with 